In section 4.4, we're going to talk about the graphs of sine and cosine functions. In example one here, we're just going to talk about the properties of these two functions, starting with the sine graph. The first thing we want to know is the domain, and I have the picture of the graph below, so let's take a look at that picture and think about what the domain might be. Here's our graph of the sine function. As you can see, it continues through, making these curves, and it's going to continue to the right, and it's going to continue to the left, and it's going to go on forever. And that tells us that our domain of our function is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Next, we're going to take a look at the range. So let's scroll down again and look at the graph. And if we look at the range, we're looking for our possible y values. Well, as you see with our sine graph, it's going and bouncing between negative 1 and positive 1. It's not going below it, and it's not going to go above it. So our range is going to go from negative 1 to positive 1, and it's going to include both of those numbers. So our range would be in brackets, including the negative 1 to positive 1. Next, we want to know about the y-intercepts. So let's take a look at the graph again, at the y-intercepts. So for our y-intercepts, we're looking for when it's crossing over the y-axis. And it's crossing over the y-axis at the point 0, 0. So our y-intercept would be the point 0, 0. Next, we're going to take a look at our x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts are where it's crossing over the x-axis, and you can see that there's a lot of them. And because our graph is going to go on forever, there's going to be an infinite number of x-intercepts. But where are those intercepts happening? You can see that first one is happening at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and it goes on forever. So we can say that our x-intercepts are at pi or times n, where n is any integer. And that just means that if n is 1, we'd be at pi. If n is 2, we'd be at 2 pi. If n is 3, we'd be at 3 pi. Integers means we could use negative numbers as well. So if n is negative 1, we'd be at negative pi. If n is negative 2, negative pi, and so on forever. Next, let's take a look at our maximum value. Taking a look at the maximum value, we can see that the maximum value we get to is positive 1. Okay, and this is going to happen quite a bit as well. It's going to go on forever. So that means our maximum values are going to have an infinite number. So our maximum values, we have a maximum of 1. And that occurs at pi over 2. So at x equals pi over 2. And then, again, it's going to keep happening. So it happens every 2 pi. So we're adding 2 pi as we get to the next one. So pi over 2 plus 2n pi. And just like before, that n is going to be any integer that we want, just like up here. So n could be 1, n could be negative 1, 2, negative 2, 8, 10, whatever we want it to be, which means we're going to take this and we're going to continue to add 2 pi as we go in either direction. Next up, let's take a look at our minimum value. So our minimum value is going to be at negative 1. That's the smallest we go on our graph. And just like the maximum value, we're going to have an infinite number of minimum values as we go along our graph. The minimum value occurs, our first one in the positive direction, occurs at 3 pi over 2. So we say our minimum is negative 1. And that's occurring when x equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2n pi. And again, n is any integer. So this is going to keep happening as we go through our graph. Next, let's take a look at our cosine function. Our cosine function is very similar to our sine function. If we take a look at that domain, so let's take a look at our graph down here. If we look at the domain, again, at our x values, as we go through our cosine function, it's going to continue to go through to the right, and it will continue to go through on the left, which means just like the sine graph, our domain of our cosine function is also from negative infinity to positive infinity. If we take a look at the range, so let's scroll back down here. Again, very similar to the sine function, 
our graph is going between negative 1 and positive 1 as it goes from left to right or from right to left. So negative 1 to positive 1. So we can write that in. Our range, and it's including both, so we have brackets here, negative 1 to positive 1. If we take a look at the y-intercept, our y-intercept for our cosine function is at the point 0, 1. So this would be 0, 1, and that's different than our sine function, where our sine function is at 0, 0. Our x-intercepts, our x-intercepts are occurring right here as we cross over the x-axis. And our first one is going to be at pi over 2. And then just like our x-intercepts, they're happening every pi over 2. So we could say that our x-intercepts are pi over 2 times n. And again, n is any integer. When we take a look at our maximum value, it's going to be the same pretty much as our sine function where our maximum is still 1, our minimum is still negative 1, but they're happening at different places. So where our maximum at sine was at pi over 2 plus 2 n pi, our maximum for our cosine function is 1 at x equals 2 pi n, where n is any integer, and our minimum value is going to occur at negative 1 again, and that can, is going to occur when x is equal to pi plus 2 pi n. where n is any integer. If you have any questions about this, let me know. The other thing I want you to take a look at right here on the bottom, these are your general forms of your equations for your sine and your cosine function. We are going to be taking a look at how the a value, the b value, the c value, and the d value affect our graph. If you have questions at this point, let me know.